I can still recall it as if it happened just yesterday. I was working at a camp in North Georgia, right in the middle of the Appalachian Trail. The town of Dallanega, where the trail starts, was very close. This place was also famous as a training spot for the Army Rangers, which made our camping trips even more thrilling. One summer, we planned to take the kids on a night walk. The weather was cool, the sky was clear, and the stars were shining brightly. It was the perfect night for cowboy camping sleeping under the sky on a tarp, without any tents. It was just us, the kids, and the beauty of nature. As night came, we sat around the campfire, telling stories and roasting marshmallows. The kids' laughter filled the air, their faces lit up by the fire. Slowly, they all fell asleep, soothed by the soft sounds of the forest. The next morning, I woke up to a sight that scared me. One of the counselors, a college girl, had a knife stuck in the ground next to her head. There was a note attached to the knife. It said, We could have killed you last night. Zoxo, the army rangers. I felt a chill as I read the note. The thought that we were not alone, that someone had been watching us, was scary. The idea of what could have happened if the army rangers were not friendly was too scary to think about. We quickly packed up and left the campsite, our minds full of fear and questions. Who were these army rangers? Why did they leave the note? Were they trying to scare us, or were they just reminding us of the dangers of the wilderness? In the following days, we took extra safety measures, making sure our campers were safe was our main concern. We never saw the army rangers again, but the memory of that morning stayed with us. It was a strong reminder of how unpredictable nature can be and the importance of being careful and prepared. This experience taught us a valuable lesson the wilderness is beautiful but can also be dangerous. It needs to be treated with respect and caution. And while we continued to enjoy our camping trips, we never forgot the note and the knife, a scary reminder of the hidden dangers that can be present. In the summer of 2011, my friend and I decided to go on a three-day camping trip to Beaver Lake, near Bolivar, Missouri. We spent the whole morning walking around, looking for the best place to set up our tent. After a quick nap, we were ready to go fishing. As we walked by the lake, we saw something strange. There were lots of fish bones and dead turtles on the shore. It was a scary sight. But we still decided to go ahead with our fishing. We waited for hours, but no fish bit. We were disappointed and decided to stop for the day. We went back to our campsite in the woods next to the lake. Usually, you would hear the sounds of animals at night and owl hooting, leaves rustling as animals moved around, the distant howl of a coyote. But that night, it was silent except for the occasional sound of an insect. The silence was creepy, and we didn't sleep well. The next morning, it was still quiet. There were no birds singing, no sounds of squirrels it was like the forest was empty. We realized that the lake, which should have been full of life, seemed to have killed all the animals. We had a hard decision to make. We only had enough water for the first night, and we didn't want to use the lake water. Feeling sad, we decided to pack up and leave early. As we drove away from Beaver Lake, the silence of the woods stayed in our minds. The trip was a strong reminder of how delicate nature is, and how important it is to respect it. It was a camping trip we would never forget, a scary adventure that taught us the importance of respecting nature. The memory of the quiet woods and the dead lake still stays with us, a creepy reminder of the silence that can fall on nature. It was a really dark night and the only light was from the last bits of the campfire. I was lying on a plastic sheet, and the cold ground under me felt really different from the warmth of my sleeping bag. The forest around me was super quiet, not like it usually is at night. All of a sudden, I heard a weird noise from the left. It sounded like bushes moving. My heart was beating really fast as I sat up, trying to see in the dark. The noise got louder and closer. I could see the bushes moving, something was definitely there. I was really scared, thinking about all the dangerous things that could be hiding in the dark. I decided not to check it out, 
Instead, I moved further into my sleeping bag, hoping whatever it was would just leave. Just when I was starting to feel a bit better, I felt my bag, which I was using as a pillow, start to move. At first it was slow, then it moved more quickly, until it was completely gone. The same noise was now right next to me. I started to panic. I was sure something was about to attack me. In a last-ditch effort to scare it away, I started making noises like a dog. I stood up, making loud noises into the dark, ready to face whatever was out there. Then, out of the dark, a small thing came out. It was a wombat, with my bag in its mouth. I felt so relieved when I realized I wasn't in danger. I was just dealing with a curious wombat. Looking back, it wasn't that scary, but for a 13-year-old me, alone in the woods, it was the most terrifying night of my life. It was a lesson learned, a reminder that not all noises at night are scary. Sometimes they're just wombats looking for a snack. I always enjoyed going camping, especially at the Rocky Mountain High Campsite in Colorado. It was a big place, with lots of land, tall pine trees, and a clear lake nearby. The air was always clean and smelled like pine and wet soil. The campsite was well kept, with specific spots for tents and campfires, and a small wooden house for the park ranger. One summer, I decided to go camping alone at Rocky Mountain High. I got to the campsite late in the afternoon, when the sun was casting long shadows between the trees. I put up my tent near the lake, which sparkled in the dimming light. When night came, I started a campfire and cooked a simple dinner. The only sounds were the fire crackling and crickets chirping. As I got into my sleeping bag, I heard a strange noise. It was a low growl, coming from the direction of the forest. I thought it was a far-off thunderstorm and fell asleep. I woke up in the middle of the night to the same growling sound, but this time it was much closer. I could hear leaves rustling and twigs snapping. My heart was beating fast as I slowly opened the tent, looking out into the dark. Suddenly, a big shadow came out of the woods. It was a bear, its fur shining in the moonlight. I held my breath, staying as still as I could. The bear sniffed the air, then slowly walked towards the lake, disappearing from sight. I breathed a sigh of relief, my heart still beating fast. I stayed awake for the rest of the night, listening to the sounds of the wild. As the sun came up, coloring the sky pink and orange, I packed up my campsite, feeling a new respect for nature. That camping trip was a strong reminder of the raw and wild beauty of nature. It was a frightening experience, but also a humbling one. It reminded me of the importance of respecting nature and the animals that live there. From then on, every time I visited Rocky Mountain High, I made sure to keep my food safe and my campsite clean, so I wouldn't attract any unwanted visitors. And that's the story of my scary camping experience at Rocky Mountain High. It was a night I'll always remember, a night that taught me what it really means to live in harmony with nature. We went on a three-day camping trip near Lake Erie in Canada. The first day was fun we set up our tents, gathered wood for the fire, and checked out the area. The peaceful lake was a nice view from our campsite. On the second day, my friend started feeling sick. He had a bad stomach, maybe from something he ate. When it got dark, he decided to wash up in the lake. We were watching him from a nearby hill, making jokes and laughing. Suddenly, he was gone. It looked like something pulled him under the water. We thought he was joking around, but when he didn't come up after a minute, we got scared. Then, he came out of the water, yelling really loud. He was far from where he went under. He ran out of the water, looking really scared. He kept saying that something grabbed his leg and pulled him under the water. We spent the rest of the night scared, sitting close together near the fire. Every noise, every ripple in the water made us jump. We were really scared. The next morning, we packed up and left as fast as we could. The beautiful lake that we liked so much before now seemed scary. I'll always remember how scared my friend looked when he ran out of the water. We still don't know what happened that night. My friend is sure that something in the lake tried to pull him under. 
We didn't see any animals in the lake, but we can't explain what happened. We know we won't be going back to that lake again. That camping trip was supposed to be fun, but it turned into a scary experience that we'll never forget. It reminded us that nature, while beautiful, can also be scary and unpredictable. I was on a camping trip at the Kirk Creek Campground in Los Padres National Forest, California. This is one of the top camping spots in America, where the sea meets the forest. The campsite was huge, with lots of trees providing both sun and shade. The Pacific Ocean was nearby, with its waves hitting the rocky beach. The air smelled like the sea and the forest. It was my third day there. I had spent the day hiking and looking around. As the sun went down, turning the sky orange and pink, I went into my tent, with the sounds of the forest helping me fall asleep. I woke up in the middle of the night. The forest was very quiet, without the usual sounds of crickets and owls. I felt a bit scared. Something didn't feel right. I opened my tent and went out, using my flashlight to see in the dark. I saw something moving near the forest. My heart was beating fast as I got closer. It was a deer, its eyes shining in the light from my flashlight. I breathed a sigh of relief. It was just a deer. Then I heard a noise behind me. I turned around, and my flashlight showed two glowing eyes. A mountain lion. I stood still, remembering what I had read about what to do if you see a mountain lion. I tried to make myself look bigger, waving my arms and speaking loudly. The mountain lion looked at me. Then it turned and went back into the forest. I took a deep breath, my heart still beating fast. I went back to my tent, feeling the rush of adrenaline slowly fade away. I was safe. I was alive. I stayed awake for the rest of the night, listening to the normal sounds of the forest. When the sun came up, I packed up my stuff, my heart still beating fast from the encounter with the mountain lion. I left the campsite with a new respect for nature and the animals that live there. The experience was scary, but it also reminded me of the beauty and power of nature. It was a camping trip I would never forget. It was a cool summer night in England. We were four friends, sitting close together in a tent in the middle of an empty field. The moon was our only light, making long, spooky shadows around us. We had spent the evening telling ghost stories, laughing and trying to scare each other. We didn't know, the real scare was still to come. As the night got darker, we decided to go to sleep. We got into our sleeping bags, the air inside the tent was quiet. Just as I was falling asleep, a loud scream broke the silence. It was my friend, his face white with fear, pointing towards a corner of the tent. There, in the weak moonlight coming through the tent, was what looked like a floating head. It was looking directly at him, its mouth moving as if it was talking, but no sound was coming out. The sight was so strange, so unexpected, that it gave us goosebumps. We were scared stiff, our hearts beating fast. None of us dared to move or talk. We just sat there, staring at the silent ghost, until the first light of dawn started to come into the tent. As soon as the sun was up, we packed up our stuff and left. The field, which had seemed so nice the day before, now felt scary and dangerous. We didn't talk much on the way home, each lost in our own thoughts. That experience changed us. It was a clear reminder of how quickly things can go from fun and games to something much scarier. We never camped out again after that night, and we certainly never told ghost stories before bed again. The memory of that night still stays with us. Even now, years later, we can't help but look over our shoulders when we find ourselves alone in the dark. It was a lesson learned the hard way some things are better left unsaid, and some places are better left unvisited. I was living in Ohio and decided to take a break and go camping. I picked Mohican State Park, a popular camping place in Ohio. The park was a beautiful, quiet place, perfect for getting away from the busy city life. The camping spot was in the middle of the park, 
surrounded by tall trees and the soft sounds of nature. It was a big spot, with enough room for my tent and a small fire pit. The air was fresh and cool, smelling of pine and wet soil. One day, I decided to rent a cabin in the woods for a change. The cabin was old and simple, made of worn out wood that fit right in with the forest around it. It was a basic cabin, with one room and a small porch that looked out over a calm lake. The first night in the cabin was peaceful. I fell asleep to the sound of crickets and the rustling of leaves in the wind. But the peace didn't last. On the second night, I was woken up by a weird noise. It sounded like something was scratching at the door. I tried to ignore it, thinking it was a raccoon or some other forest animal, but the scratching got louder and more desperate. I got up and carefully went to the door. The moonlight coming through the window made scary shadows on the wooden floor. I could feel my heart beating fast as I reached for the doorknob. I slowly opened the door, half expecting to see a wild animal on the other side. But there was nothing there. Just the quiet, dark forest. I closed the door and went back to bed, but I couldn't stop feeling nervous. The next morning, I found deep, rough scratches on the door. They were too big to have been made by any animal I knew of. Despite the scary experience, I decided to stay another night. I couldn't let fear ruin my camping trip. But the weird things didn't stop. Things inside the cabin moved by themselves. I would find my stuff in places I didn't remember leaving them. I heard whispers in the wind, words that I couldn't understand. On my last night, I decided to stay awake and face whatever was haunting the cabin. As the hours passed, it got really cold. I could see my breath in the cold air. Then I heard it again, the scratching at the door. This time, it was followed by a low growl. I gathered all my bravery and threw the door open. But once again, there was nothing there. Just the silent, moonlit forest. I stepped outside, looking around for any signs of what could have made the noise. That's when I saw it. A set of large, strange tracks leading away from the cabin and into the forest. I followed the tracks until they disappeared into the thick bushes. I never found out what made them. The next morning, I packed up my stuff and left the cabin. As I drove away, I couldn't help but feel relieved. I had survived my scary experience in the cabin. Despite the fear and uncertainty, I look back on that experience as an adventure. It was a reminder of the mysteries and wonders of nature, of the unknown that lies in the heart of the forest. And even though I may never know what was outside my cabin those nights, the memory of that camping trip will stay with me forever. I always wanted to see the wild side of Alaska. So, I decided to rent a cabin right in the middle of it. I picked Riley Creek Campground, one of the top camping spots in Alaska. It was close to the entrance of Denali National Park, a place famous for its amazing views and different types of animals. The camping spot was big, with many cabins spread out, each one private and quiet. The campground was a mix of thick woods and open fields, with the big Mount Denali in the background. The air was fresh and smelled like pine trees and wet soil. The cabin I rented was simple, made of logs and had a small front porch. Inside, it was comfortable with one room that had a bed, a small cooking area, and a wood-burning stove for heat. It was simple, but that's what made it nice. The first few days were calm. I spent my time walking around the campground, fishing in the nearby stream, and at night, I would sit by the fire outside my cabin, looking at the stars. But then, things started to feel weird. One evening, when I was coming back from a walk, I noticed my cabin door was a bit open. I was sure I had closed it. Inside, everything was as I had left it. I thought maybe the wind had opened it. The next day, I found my food all over the cooking area floor. This was odd because I had kept them in a locked box. I cleaned up, thinking maybe some animal had somehow gotten in. That night, when I was in bed, I heard a soft scratching sound from outside. It kept going and seemed to be moving around the cabin. I tried to tell myself it was just a small animal, but the sound was too loud, too close. I decided to check it out. 
I took my flashlight and went outside. The light cut through the dark, but there was nothing there. The scratching stopped. Everything was very quiet. I stood there for a bit, listening, but the only sound was the wind moving through the trees. Feeling a bit scared, I went back inside and locked the door. I didn't sleep much that night. The next morning, I found deep, strange marks around the outside of the cabin. That was enough for me. I packed up my stuff and left. As I was driving away, I looked in the rearview mirror. The cabin looked peaceful in the morning light, hiding the fear I had felt. I realized then that the wild is a beautiful place, but it's also wild, unpredictable, and not completely ours. I came back home with a new respect for nature and a story that I would remember forever. The trip didn't go as I had planned, but it was an adventure, after all. And that's what life is all about, isn't it? I've always loved going on adventures. So, when I had the opportunity to rent a cabin in Colorado, I jumped at it. The place was known as America's Best Campground, located right in the middle of the Rocky Mountains. It was a huge area with tall pine trees, a clear lake, and the beautiful Rockies all around. The air was clean and smelled like pine and flowers. The cabin I rented was simple but cozy, made of logs and located on a small hill with a view of the lake. It was quiet and peaceful, just what I needed. The first few days were calm. I spent my time walking around, fishing in the lake, and watching the amazing sunsets. One night, just as I was falling asleep, I heard some noise outside. I thought it was probably a deer or a raccoon, which are common in that area. But then, the noise got louder and seemed closer. I felt a bit scared. I took my flashlight and carefully went outside. The light from the flashlight showed nothing unusual. But just as I was about to go back inside, I noticed something strange. My cooler, which I had left closed, was now open, and everything inside was scattered around. But there were no animal footprints, no signs of a bear or a raccoon. For the next few days, weird things kept happening. My fishing equipment went missing, only to be found by the lake. My firewood was scattered around the campsite. Each event was strange, but there was no clear reason for it. On my last night, I decided to stay awake, hoping to see what was causing all this. Hours went by, and just as I was about to give up I saw it. A tall, thin figure was going through my stuff. When I pointed my flashlight at it, the figure turned. It was a man, looking rough and wild. We looked at each other, and he ran off into the woods. The next morning, I told the local authorities about what happened. They told me that he was probably a hermit living in the wilderness, not dangerous but not fond of people. They promised they would check it out. As I was packing up and getting ready to leave, I felt relieved. My adventure had turned into a real-life mystery, a story I would share for years to come. Despite the fear and uncertainty, I had made it through my solo trip in the cabin. I had faced the unknown and came out okay. And as I was leaving, I knew this was an experience I would always remember. <laughs>